We'll be playing our white character. They are the Critics Darlings, programs that showcase our multicultural community. But many in the industry are concerned that TV remains far too white. One of these people is Joyce Huen, an agent who has represented ethnic actors for over 20 years. She says too often TV takes a tokenistic approach to casting. Sometimes in the show there's already an ethnic actor or not Anglo actor. And they, yes, I do get that feeling that, you know, well, we've already got a Asian actor. We don't need another Asian actor. And when roles do appear, they're often in the form of racial stereotypes. Asian gangsters or Asian businessmen. Um, yeah, those are probably the most common roles they put them into. But Dr. Blinda Smale from Monash University says TV is making some headway when it comes to presenting a variety of faces on the box. Milestones I can think of are shows like East West 101. Uh, we also have Redfern Now, which has been, you know, a real kind of flagship show in terms of Indigenous representation. It's the commercial networks that Dr. Smale says aren't pulling their weight, broadcasting almost exclusively white content. And it's our most popular dramas like Neighbours that she says have the most work to do. Explain yourself. One person intimately aware of TV's racial divide is Monique Gunaratna, the former Neighbours star whose on-screen family were written out of the soap. They took the steps forward in leading the way on commercial television and it was just a bit, you know, a bit sad to see them kind of take that step backwards. Gunaratna now fronts a committee trying to increase diversity on our screens a move she says will have an impact on how non-white Australians see themselves. I think it's important to show our younger generation that you can have brown skin and speak with an Australian accent and that is normal and fine and accepted. And that's when good neighbours become good friends. That's radical. <laughs> Mark Carney, Newsline. <laughs> how, how do you think you've changed as a singer and a performer since all that began in this time last year? Um, well, actually, what being on The X Factor, First of all, it was such a big confidence boost for me and Adam, again, he also encouraged me to be a bit more, um, like he always told me that like my singing didn't need any work, it was just my performance and having a good stage presence, so I think mm -hmm. I've really worked on that since the X Factor and throughout Eurovision. Um, more, yeah, just like the perfor performance side and, mm -hmm. and being a, a bit showing a bit more showmanship. Yeah, imagine there's some aspiring performers watching at the moment. How do they do that? How do they work on their stage presence? Maybe I need to do it in this video right now and you can <laughs> give me some tips. I think, I think it's definitely, I think everyone's got um, like the ability to, to go out on stage and just be like, show all of their showmanship. I think it's just, that some people aren't really comfortable comfortable with it. So I think once you start believing in, in yourself and telling yourself that, you know, what I do is is what makes me special. And mm -hmm. yeah, just when you start believing in yourself and that's when you can get really comfortable and just go out on stage and just like own it. Own it. Yeah. It's good advice. It sounds simple, but it takes some work. I yeah, a, a lot of like it, get trying to get a lot of get a lot of experience like with performing on stages and stuff um, that really helps yeah um, but yeah I think it's just got to do with like how much you want it and how much you believe in yourself that really comes through in your performance yeah. I spoke to councillor Lee Wilson today who talked about not only how um, how devastating this potentially could be for the town but also uh, just how important it is that that the owner does consider selling selling this plant to people who could actually put it to use again and keep some of those employees here in work and getting the pay they need. The families of those employees are also talking about how this affects them today. Um, naturally many of them are young families, three, four children. I've spoken to one young mother whose husband has worked here for nearly five years and um, she has four children two of which are special needs and one of which underwent um, emergency surgery earlier this year. And without this source of income, they're really unsure how they're going to continue to make ends meet and continue to pay their two mortgages, which um, sustains their family. Many of those employees, if, if they're not in the, the factory today, they actually haven't found out in person 
that uh, the closure is imminent due to start in about August and happen in stages. Uh, they haven't received emails or text messages and some of those families say that it's uh, actually disrespectful of the hard work their, their loved ones have put in to, to not be notified in person. Um, they're on their days off and, and certainly haven't been filled in on what's going on, have had to turn to media, social media and the like to actually get some details. <laughs> Thank you.